on the present. And let's begin the sessions with our prayers as always. Oh. 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 Shri Ganesha Yanamaha. Om Shri Saraswatiye Namaha Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Samastha Jana Kalyane Niratam Karunamayam Namami Chinnayam Devam Sadgurum Brahma Vidvaram Shruti Smriti Purananam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Hari Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om so till last class, we saw about the uh, four koshas. We have seen four of the five. The four ko first four koshas are Annamaya, fra, uh, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, the foot sheet, the energy sheet, the mental sheet, intellectual sheet. We have seen till that. And today we are going to see about the final sheet or the fifth sheet, which is called as Anandamaya Kosha. Okay. So here it says that we will directly jump into the verse because I have quite a bit to cover today. Um, so it is, let's see the verse. Ananda Maya Kaha. Evam Eva Karana Sharira Bhuta Avidyasya Milina Satvam Priyadi Vritti Sahitam Sat Ananda Maya Kosha Etat Kosha Panchakam. One more time. Anandamaya ka evam eva karana sharira bhuta avidyasta malina sattvam priyadi vritti sahitam sat anandamaya kosha eta kosha panchakam. So here it says, what is blue sheet? Established in ignorance, which is of the form of causal body, which is of impure nature, united with thoughts like Priya and so on is the bliss sheet. So these are the five sheets. All right. So we already saw that the Annamaya Kosha corresponds to the gross body. Ma, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha. These three together constitutes the subtle body or Sukshma Sharira. Anandamaya Kosha corresponds to the causal body. So pretty much the same characteristics. And before we see about the characteristics, let us take this, uh, uh, this thing called Priyadi Vritti Sahitam. Okay, so this one of the characteristics of this bliss sheet is being said that it is uh, united with thoughts like Priya and so on. Okay, so Priya is basically what we say is <clears throat> According to Vedanta and also it will be uh, our own subjective experience also, all happiness, all joy, all bliss that we experience is nothing but a reflection of the bliss of our self. Remember the nature of Atma, it is defined as Sat Chit Ananda, right? Only that Ananda is getting reflected as all forms of joy that we experience in this material world also. Okay, so this Priya, there are actually three degrees of this. Okay, so one is Priya, Moda, Pramoda. Okay, so these are the three uh, degrees of, uh, what to say, joy, if I can say that. What is the difference between, uh, I mean, how is it categorized that we will first see, and then we will understand a little bit more about this Anandamaya Kosha. Okay, so here, <clears throat> yeah. all right. So first is the joy of thinking of a dear object is called Priya. Let's take for example, now it is mango season. No, we will take mango as example. We all, I'm assuming, love mangoes. So just thinking about mango itself gives us a lot of joy, isn't it? Wow, how sweet, how delicious. When we bite into it, how nice it feels. We feel that no mango is not there in our hands. It's not there anywhere in the vicinity. We are just thinking about that mango. That itself gives us joy, isn't it? That degree of separation from the object of joy to our experience joy is Priya. 
just in the thought level. Then what happens? A vendor goes in the street hawking mangoes. Aha, mangoes has come close to us. So then what we go, we run down and we buy one kilo mangoes and then we hold that mango in our hand and we smell it. And before we eat it, we just take it in our hand. Now we have that object of desire in our hand itself. So what happens? The joy increases, isn't it? We feel even more joyful. And that is called moda. All right, moda is when we actually gain the object. It can also be a person. Just I'm just giving an example with my phone. Then comes what happens. We will cut the mango nicely and then we will scoop the flesh and eat it. And finally, the most joyful part of the mango is eating that cotta, you know, that seed. Then we will just bite into it and the juices will flow into our mouth. And ah, mango and the, I have become one. There is no separation between me and mango now, isn't it? That is called pramoda. There is no difference between the enjoyer and the object of enjoyment. They have become one. So that is pramoda. So this is the three degrees of, um, what to say, joy that we experience. Priya, moda and pramoda. So, and when we are in the waking state, all right, we experience joy in different, different ways. For example, the joy of watching the sunrise is completely different from the joy or the happiness or the thrill that we feel when we are watching a detective movie, isn't it? When we are watching a murder mystery, it is completely different from, uh, not everybody does this, but you know, it is completely different from when we feel like, ah, that person, no, he did wrong to me. Now he is suffering. Ha ha ha. We mostly, we won't feel like that. We feel sorry for them, but you know, on those rare occasions, that is a different joy. So many different types of joys we experience when we are in the waking state and even in the dream state too. I think I've already mentioned this in our, when we were, um, when we were uh, discussing about the three states, right? Waking, dream and deep sleep. In the waking state, all these degrees of joys are there. Different experiences of the joys are there and no two joys can be compared to each other. What I experience, same sunset only you and me will be seeing. I will be experiencing it in a different degree of joy. You will probably not even feel joy about it, right? So it is completely different. But when we are in the deep sleep state, what happens? There is just a homogeneity. We are only experiencing bliss. Remember when we saw the definition for deep sleep state? Kimapina janami. We know nothing. That is what we feel when we are in the deep sleep state, isn't it? And in the deep, deep sleep state, only the causal body is available for us. We saw, no, Taijasa. We saw that, right? So, um, sorry, not Taijasa. Uh, we are the the pragna taijasa vaishwa that the causal body only is available for us so in the deep sleep state there is no degrees of joy we don't say this deep sleep is better than that that deep sleep my sunday sleep is better than monday sleep no we don't feel like that right deep sleep is deep sleep the joy experienced is the same and everybody experiences the same joy whether you go into a deep sleep or i go into the deep sleep the experience remains the same for all irrespective of our uh, social status our age our uh, size of the body our financial status nothing matters we all feel the same when we are in the deep sleep state isn't it so that is what is being said here in Ananda Mayaposha. First point we have to remember is all bliss that we experience is a reflection of the bliss of the true self. All right. In the uh, Ananda Mayaposha, we are experiencing this bliss through the causal body where there is no degrees of separation, where there is no, there is a homogeneity in the experience of bliss. All right. But this Anandamaya Kosha is also said it is of impure nature. See, it is said Malina Sattva. Sattva is pure. Malina Sattva, is, Malina Sattva means impure. Why it is called impure? Is pure and pure is not from a moral or a judgmental perspective. It is with respect to the homogeneity. Right. Um, for example, 
then we are associating with the the manomaya kosha also when our th- when we say our thoughts are pure it doesn't mean doesn't mean i'm only thinking very good thoughts and i'm like being a very good human nothing like that purity means the homogeneity how channelized it is how similar it is when do you say a water is pure when it is only water no when it doesn't have anything else in it isn't it that's when we say that water is pure and it is of its own true nature similarly even in the causal body i mean anandamaya kosha we say it is not pure because it is not of the nature of the true self it has ignorance coming into it yes of all the sheets anandamaya kosha is the closest to the self because it has when we are in deep sleep no other thoughts are happening on our mind we are not running behind anything all the other sheets are not functioning so we are not having uh, experiencing any emotions we are not uh, taking any decisions we are not uh, um, you know troubled by the hunger and thirst that is felt by the pranamaya kosha the bodily afflictions doesn't bother us when we are even if we are suffering from very severe disease when we are in deep sleep we are not experiencing the pain of the disease isn't it so in the anandamaya kosha all this are dropped off but what still remains is the ignorance that is why it is said impure what ignorance in anandamaya kosha that awareness of our true self is completely not there this is totally opposite to what we feel when we are in samadhi state when we are in deep meditation and we finally transcend all this uh, koshas we are completely aware that i am that tatvamasi becomes aware comes to our cognition but in deep sleep it is not in our cognition right we we don't know anything when we are in deep sleep because it has this ignorance component it is said that anandamaya kosha is also of impure nature so uh, till this it is clear it is called bliss sheet because we experience complete unadulterated homogeneous joy in the bliss sheet but it is also impure because of the ignorance that is also there in the bliss sheet so this is the definition for anandamaya kosha established in ignorance which is of the form of causal body or nature united with thoughts like priya and so on priya and so on is priya moda pramoda this is the bliss sheet these are the five sheets okay so here another important thing that we can reflect upon is what happens when we are in our deep sleep okay or when when we are in a deep sleep only the causal body or anandamaya kosha is functioning everything else is gone now for example <clears throat> not for example what happens every day once the sun sets imagine there are there is no electricity okay once the sun sets only darkness is there everywhere isn't it there is no building there are no trees nothing it's a, it's a pitch black amavasa night no electricity middle of the night then how it is are we able to distinguish any shapes are we able to see any forms all that we are able to see is only darkness does it mean that the trees building humans cattle everything has vanished no it is just covered by darkness that distinction is lost right similarly in the deep deep sleep state what happens is our own perceived boundaries with respect to me and things other than me is lost on the deep sleep state it is covered by the ignorance or the darkness then what happens next day sun rises and then slowly the light comes and again we are able to see the same tree same building same cattle everything we are able to see isn't it then what happens we are able to make the differentiation similarly once we wake up then we become aware of oh we wake up the first as soon as we wake up there will be no thought then first i thought will be up i am awake i am aruna i have to do all these things today oh it is already 8 o'clock i have to rush and get ready and go to work slowly slowly all these all these sheets immediately come into being and we start functioning again as this individual but when we are in the deep sleep state nothing is there no distinction there is no aruna there is no earth there is no universe nothing is there only that complete ignorance but cloaked in bliss is available
okay so this is what is about the anandamaya kosha is this clear any doubts in this all right okay so we have to remember that each sheep becomes subtler and subtler subtler means it becomes more pervasive okay and also remember just like how i said in causal body don't think you have to go inner 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 and contract yourself actually the subtler and subtler it becomes the bigger and bigger the boundaries become okay so the causal uh, ananda uh, ananda maya kosha is the biggest sheath and it pervades all other sheaths and all joy that we experience comes from the reflection of the self whose nature is that of satchitananda and anandamaya kosha is the closest to our true self though we are not able to experience it completely because of ignorance we are not aware we are not cognizant the chit factor is missing at that time all right so this is about the anandamaya kosha next verse is very important next verse is, next verse is very practical and we can keep reflecting on it again and again so here what it is being said is <clears throat> beyond the five sheets okay it it the word madhyam madhyam keeps coming madhyam means my my okay madhyam shariram okay sorry i forgot to screen share madhyam shariram madhya prana madhyam mana cha madhya buddhi madhyam अज्ञानम इति स्वेन एव ज्ञायते तद्यता मदीयत्वेन ज्ञातम कटक कुंडल गृहादिकम स्वस्वमात बिन्नम तथा पंचकोशादिकम स्वस्वमात बिन्नम मदीयत्वेन ज्ञातम आत्मा न भवति ओके सो व्हाट इट सेस इज just as bangles earrings and a house this kataka kundala grihadikam bangles um earrings house and so on how we say they are all mine are all other than the knower me so to the five sheets and so on are known by oneself as my body my mind my intellect my ignorance and are different from me and therefore not the self i will read the explanation again alone one more time and then we will see this in detail okay just as bangles earrings a house and so on are known as mine are all other than the knower me so to the five sheets and so on are known by oneself as my body my mind my intellect and my ignorance and are different from me and therefore not the self all right so again and again we come back to the same point wherein we say we are studying about all these in detail just to understand and establish that all these are not me this is not my true nature to come to that conclusion only we are studying about all this in nature all right so this theoretically this is very simple no see when we say my water bottle my house my husband my child my work all this we say no my business my writing my thinking all this we say when we say my 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 to anything it is something other than us no am i the water bottle am i the husband am i the child it's different right but what what do i mean i mean it belongs to me we are not the same isn't it similarly within ourselves also we are able to clearly see my body my feelings my thoughts my energy my ignorance we are able to see this no as separate from the knower that i if you apply the same logic it means just like how the house is not you the body is also not you that is what this logic is okay so this is where we come into this process of knower and the known drig drishya all right i am aware of the body aware of the mind aware of the intellect i know the uh, i know my energy i i am aware of all these things so this i is the knower 
this i also says my house my chain my earring my uh, necklace all this it says no but does the i go and say i am saying my necklace so i am that necklace we are it's very laughable no this idea we 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 say my 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 but we clearly know that that is not me similarly for this body emotions thoughts everything also we can say my 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 but then we are identifying them as our own self get the logic how stupid no <laughs> we are not able to distinguish when it comes to this we say we are completely identified i am this i am this body i am this mind but we also say my body my mind but when we say my car we don't say oh i am that car because i said my car it's very funny when we think about it right but why is it it is so difficult for us to apply it guruji himself says this is not something very difficult to grasp we all can understand this logic it is not some rocket science we all can understand this logic but why we are not able to appreciate the logic even if by reflection over and over and over again and whenever we remember to apply it in various situations and we are able to appreciate it also to some extent we never get completely established in the truth at times that flashes will come and go but we are not able to completely establish in the truth that i am not this body i am that pure self i am shuddha sattva why am i not able to go to that state he gives two reasons both are interconnected only and this is very important and this is like kind of a consolation for us okay <laughs> actually he is telling this is the practical difficulty he says the self is inconceivable therefore we have no notion of it it stands well covered by the five sheets the pure self we have seen no in the first class i mean i think almost in the beginning itself we have seen it is beyond all description definition it is beyond words we can only indicate the truth we have to subjectively experience the truth but we cannot describe it because it is something that is um that is so inconceivable that is beyond the human imagination we are not able to relate and identify to the truth even though that is what our true nature is we are not able to identify with that easily because it is not there in our cognizance it is it is not there within the capacity of the mind and we are designed in such a way we are engineered in such a way to live through this body and mind so that is the first difficulty and see how much covering god has given he has created this gross body subtle body causal body in that he has created sheets and then he is giving us experience through dream state deep sleep waking all this is given us no completely covering the nature of the true self unless until we have that what am i doing if unless until that question is really pressing and we start slowly digging deeper and deeper we will not even think about it that is the first difficulty it is so very well hidden and it is beyond our comprehension second difficulty is these five sheets no they are always in proximity of the self and because it is always in proximity and because it is always in our cognizance we are easily able to identify with the five sheets we are always with our body no even with the house even with the spouse even with the child we are not 24 by 7 together with them isn't it but with the body with the mind with the intellect 24 by 7 365 days no break not even one micro millisecond break <laughs> we are <laughs> with them only all the time so what happens naturally we identify with this body mind and intellect okay now that we know we should start becoming very vigilant Okay, we should be very alert. Vivek Kachuda Mani, uh, Bhagavad Pada keeps saying, "No ignorance. Um, uh, what is that? Um, lack of awareness is equal to death." I'm not able to get the exact words, but once we are not vigilant, now that we know, we should start becoming very vigilant. We should start observing our own thoughts, actions, and we should pay attention and you know start putting in that little difference, little bit of gap between 
the body me both are different the thoughts me both are different the emotions and me they are different they are also like my house they are also like my spouse they are also like my child they are also like my car they are not me i am different from them slowly 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 we should start bringing it into our awareness all right so with this we finish the five sheets any doubts make sense no unless until we clearly understand how this body mind complex is working and unless until we have a clear knowledge about that how will we able to differentiate between that and the self isn't it so that's why bhagavad pada has taken so much pains to clearly take us through all that we identify ourselves with in our everyday life and now that he has given us this knowledge we should put our intellect into use viveka vairagya everything should come into play and we should slowly slowly see it's not like suddenly we listen to this and overnight we become aham brahmasmi and we are enlightened no it doesn't happen that way but we just have to keep putting in that effort we have to keep watching we have to whenever we are overly attached to this body to the mind to the thoughts and that is very easy to identify you know how we can identify this whenever somebody says something and we are feeling very bad about it no it means we are attached that somebody says aruna you have put on a lot of weight and then i was like oh god now i should i'm not going to eat anything you know i'm going to run 20 kilometers today ma i am not this body okay let us say sent it how we are reacting we would have put our heart and soul did created one super proposal and the client goes yeah what is this nothing is there i don't want to work with you guys then you're like oh my god so much of thought had gone into it and how can he say this that guy is a fool he is not able to see the potential in this project i have thought so much i have done so much that is just my intellect that is just my thoughts that has taken the shape of the proposal i am not that slowly slowly we have to consciously practice there is no other option and then we have to stick on to a sadhana the sadhana alone will help us increase our sense of awareness doing japa meditation all this are very very important to bring the mind to a state of awareness and only then all this will become possible but now that we know this knowledge we should not let go of this we should hold on to it tightly with both our hands of course there will be time and we will make big mistakes we will fall we will act stupidly just because we know doesn't mean that we suddenly become perfect overnight nothing like that will happen how kind we are to ourselves even when we are making mistakes it should come i am not my mistake i am something other than that similarly i am not my good deeds i am not my punya karma i am something apart from that we have to apply it constantly everywhere and once we start doing it we will be able to slowly come to identify ourselves with our true nature which is that of unbroken conscious bliss okay worth it no otherwise we'll again and again be doing this only suddenly one day we'll happy we'll be happy 10 days we'll be sad and 5 days we'll be angry with somebody else again and again this chakra only will be going on we should raise about that isn't it so yeah so with this thought uh, i will finish the class appa i covered it <laughs> so you will finish the class with our closing prayers as always okay o ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಕ್ಷ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ thank you so much for logging in today uh, in the next class we will be dealing with different topics okay so i'll see you again next friday as usual at 5:30 pm god willing okay thank you so much hari om bye hari om
हरिओम हरिओम